Hi guys, I'm back, and this video is dedicated to a uh, YouTube user who goes by the name of Soggy Jocks. Uh, he was asking a little bit more about the three-point registration, and um, so I decided to go ahead and do a quick video and show you how it works. Um, the, the, his question was, how do you keep the screen from being offset when you take it off and put it back on? So what I've done here, I've got two cameras. That one's the HD. That one up there is the uh, low def camera. And uh, as you see on the HD, you can uh, get a pretty good view of the, the whole screen. And now I've got two screens, one set up, and they're there to simulate two color print. So there's a red screen, and here's a green screen. And all I've done here is I took one of my film positive and some dry erase markers, and, uh, and, uh, just drew the crosshairs that are on the grid of my palette. So if I pull this one off, you can see my palette has all the, the uh, black lines there. So my design here matches up to those black lines. And as you just saw, I pulled the screen off and put it back on, and it's in exactly the same place it was before. That's because, as I mentioned in the, uh, the screen printers video, there are three points of registration. There are two on the outer, and those control the movement or the locking in in the Y direction, as in the long way. Then there's one point here. Once again, it, all the three of these points on my presses also have rare earth magnets to hold the screen on. So I can't accidentally pull it off or make it move without moving the entire, uh, entire uh, table. So the, uh, the center registration point controls the x-axis. So when I remove it and it comes along, it locks it in the x-axis up against this post here and then in both points on the y-axis. So if I was to want to do a two color print, what I would do is I would set my design on the palette and then I would take my film positive and I would put some tape facing up on that, that uh, design, registered to the design. I would set my screen down on top of it, put it down and let the tape stick it to the bottom of the screen. As long as I don't touch these points of registration that are, that are mounted on the screen, after I'm done uh, burning and cleaning that screen out, that design should be within hundredths of being perfectly registered to the pattern I want to uh, print it, that I will ha have taped down on the platen. So that would be one screen. Then I would do the same thing for the next color. Whoops. And I just kicked my camera. Am I still? Yep, I'm still there, kind of. Okay. So as you see, when I placed this one down, my pattern ended up exactly in the same spots as uh, the red screen did. Now when I pull it off and put the red screen back, oops, and I kicked my camera again. Keep doing that. That's not a good thing. There we go. All right. If you look, you'll see that the, the red lines are sitting exactly where they were over the black lines. Now, when we, we print out a, uh, a uh, design on the, on the uh, film positive, normally we'll have a couple points that are circles with crosshairs in them. Now they're not going to be this big of course, they're going to be very small and the lines are going to be very fine which allows us to get even better registration. So either in the corners or you might just go with three so you triangulate it down. You see I'm using dry erase marker because I can just rub it off and get rid of it and I can still use these film positives so I'm not burning any. So normally we would Burn, or print out our, our film positive 
and we would make sure that there are registration marks on each one in exactly the same place. So we can easily register the print, each layer of the print, to the proper place. Now, what happens when you move the registration? Well, keep an eye on the lines. You should all of a sudden see a black line come askew here. So I will move this one and you can see underneath you see the red coming off of the black. Because I am moving the uh, registration point here on the left hand side and I'm, I'm taking it in so the whole screen is canting over to the left. Now I can bring it back. Using star knobs on the registration point make this so easy and I will over adjust it and go the other way. And you see the black line that used to be covered by the red line. And now I'll go ahead and bring it back again. There we go. Now if I go with the center, I'll loosen up my locker on the center. And now you see it moving to the left because I'm I'm forcing the bolt this way, which is going to mean the screen is going to be shifting back to the left, and you can see I moved it a quarter inch off of the black line. My Y direction hasn't been affected at all, but I've moved, shifted the whole screen, well, about three-eighths of an inch now. So now let me put it back. I normally use a ratchet on this because my fingers are starting to get a little bit torn up. And there we go. The print is right back where it started. Of course, the thinner the line you use, the better registration you get. I hope that's pretty clear to everybody. And there we go. That's how the three-point registration works. The outer edge, hold it in place in the Y direction. The one in the middle holds it in place in the x-axis. Now in the old, old style of this, or the style that a lot of people use, they don't use the magnets and they have to hold the screen in place up against those registration posts. Since I've got the magnets, I don't have to hold the screen because the screen doesn't move. And I'll go one more time, I'll throw the green screen back up. And you notice, two different size screens same palette, everything works out great. This is why I love the three-point registration. I'm not limited on palette size or screen size. Uh, I, can, I can use whatever sizes I have and everything's going to work out just fine for me. So that's all there is to it. Adjustments on the X and Y side, or on the left and right our y-axis. The uh, adjustment in the middle is the x-axis. Now you see I just by adjusting both sides if you look carefully, you can see the black line that this line used to cover. By adjusting both sides, I've shifted the y-axis all the way in. So now to get it all lined back up again, I'm aligned there on the center. So now it's just a matter of making sure I go with the right direction and push this guy back out where he belongs.
Almost there. A little bit further. There we go. Pretty simple. Great little system. Uh, if you're building it, I hope you enjoy using it. If you're thinking about a system, give this one a shot. It's cheap and quick to make, and you don't have anything to lose. That's all I have for today. Y'all have a good day, and keep up the good fight. I'll see you next time. Bye.